What's going on Dividend Chasers? It's the Dividend Bloodhound here with another investing episode. In this episode we're talking about three top UK stocks for you to potentially look at and add to your portfolio. I've deliberately picked three companies that have had different things happen to them over the last couple of months that have caused devaluations in their share price but then a recovery side of things as well whether they're either partially their way through the recovery fully recovered or still just about to start getting starting their journey to recovery and the reasons for this will become evident later on in the video hopefully if this video brings you some value do please consider hitting the like button over in the corner here or even subscribing to my channel and ticking the notification bell as well that'd be absolutely fantastic that being said Roll the intro and I'll catch you on the other side for our first stock. Hey again guys, welcome into the video. Our first company is Aviva PLC, a huge insurance provider and holdings asset management company from the UK, based here in the UK but operates across Europe and Asia. They have a huge product and diverse product range to offer you, whether that be life insurance, investments, or car insurance, etc. And they have recently reinstated their dividend, having cut it due to the global pandemic. They came under some pressure to do this, and unlike legal in general, they actually followed through with it and did cut it for the financial health of the business. But now, recent news has suggested that the dividend is going to be restored dividend real return at six pence per share an interim payout that you needed to own the company on the 13th of august to do so and it's going to be paid on the 24th of september so if you got in while the getting was good and the share price was really cheap you're going to reap the rewards of this for the future if you didn't they're a biannual dividend payer so if you buy in now at the still heavily discounted stock price at £2.75 versus £4.20 before the crisis began, you can still get in for the next dividend payout which will be early 2021. Profits for the first two quarters of 2020 have been significantly down, down 12% to £1.22 billion. But this is for obvious reasons due to insurance claims made and loss of income due to the global pandemic. This is not a bad thing for their business model. It's just, again, they've been affected by the pandemic. Let's get into the app and let's have a look at their fundamentals and see where we are at going forward. Hey again, guys. Welcome into the app. As you can see, a significant price reduction, but there has been some recovery. We have a share price of £2.76 at the moment, all the way down from £4.11 in February. We've got 30,000 employees. The CEO is Amanda Blank. Market cap of 11.1 billion. A PE ratio of 4.39. Revenue of 70.27 billion. EPS of 64 pence. A dividend yield we know that they're just coming back now, so it is a low yield at the moment because they had to cut it, but they are recovering and that dividend has been reinstated. Have a net income currently of 2.55 billion. They've had to keep a lot of this extra liquidity on hand because they need to be able to they need to be able to pay this out in the event of insurance claims. They've got quite a high debt to assets ratio in line with other insurance companies of 96.26% because a lot of their assets under their management are obviously not theirs. Now, if we hop over to the growth metrics, we can see that their actual three year and five year revenue growth was 10 and 8% respectively, which is pretty good. We've got three year and five year EPS growth for 5% and then 61% over the time. So that means they're doing particularly well. They've got a lot more efficient at what they do and the products that they offer. A five year compound annual growth rate of 8.23%. That is also really, really strong, getting towards double digits growth. And then obviously 
down at the bottom there, three year dividend growth is out the window because they've had to, because they've suffered the dividend cut for the financial health of the company and there was some ethical issues and political pressure that came onto them in order to cut the dividend so they could afford to pay their insurance, but basically pay out to their customers that might need it due to the pandemic. So in the middle of the crisis, it dropped to £2.10 and then it remained there as we found out that they were definitely going to cut their dividends. But then since the dividends have been reinstated, there's been a slight recovery to £2.90, £2.98, even up to £3.4p before simmering back off a little bit. This is a good time to lock in a company that's got some appreciation in it here, back up to £4 potentially, and dividends returning so you can scoop the share price up at quite a, a low cost and you'll be able to start off from a really strong position because they should start growing the dividends in the longer term as well. This is a value delivery speech that happened from the CEO in the last, when it then announced the dividends were returning, that's how they want to return value to the customer to the customer and to the investor should i say that will give uh, two, a two-pronged approach basically share price appreciation and dividends that being said i will wrap up there and i'll catch you back outside in the real world hey again guys welcome back welcome back so that was aviva there partially through their recovery process with the dividends now restored and slowly but surely coming out of the other side of this crisis or at least adapting to it. Now we're going to move on to a company that is still reeling from the from the pandemic essentially. Their share price has reduced and I believe it is pretty much bottomed out now and that company is Lloyd's Banking Group. Now the Lloyd's Group have been affected much like Aviva has uh, by the pandemic but what's worth considering with Aviva and Lloyds Group is the whole sector came down as a whole so Aviva the likes of Legal and General and Allianz their share price is reduced as well and that's exactly the same thing that's happened with Lloyds Banking Group Barclays HSBC all of their share prices have reduced as well and that's largely because they've sliced their dividends they're not paying dividends at the request of the Bank of England and the UK government for at least the rest of 2020 so anybody that's a dividend investor has taken flight from these companies Lloyds Banking Group is a large provider of banking in the UK with the retail banking sector. They also own Halifax, a large chunk of Bank of Scotland, Scottish Widows and Lex Autolist for the cars. So they've diversified their branding there a little bit to aid in their income and their takeover. They are considered one of the big four banks in the UK. And at a share price currently at 27p, yes, that's 27p. They're actually rather cheap to get hold of right now. Uh, versus their share price pre-pandemic, um, their share price was actually 67p. So there's a potential 40%, uh, 40%, 40 pence return on your investment, a 40 pence upside for you to look into, for you to look into, and potentially there's a over 100% return there. That being said, I do think you'll have to wait and play the long game with this one for the price to slowly recover, which I believe that it will. If I wasn't invested in HSBC, I'd definitely be looking into these guys. And then the dividend will return as well over in 2021, I think. And the good thing about the banking sector is their income is relatively stable. So it's not like these banks haven't got the money to pay the dividend. They've just been instructed by the Bank of England and the UK government to keep hold of it as liquidity to help uh, businesses come out of this recession that we are in. That being said, let's get into the app and let's have a look at their fundamentals. Hey again guys, here we are looking at Lloyd's Banking Group then. And as you can see, a 44.94% reduction in the last year on the share price. And most of that has came from the significant drop suffered here. So we peaked at 67 pence a share here at the, on the 15th of December and then we fell all the way down to 31p in March and then a little bit further down to 28 and now it has never been cheaper at the moment 
as we mentioned the banking sector is suffering right now with the lack of dividends forcing investors to take flight elsewhere to look for value which is unusual really when you consider that the banking sector is usually so safe but the political pressure has forced has forced companies hands and forced investors hands to um, take flight and cut the dividends however they do still retain a enormous employee base uh, of 63,000 people and their have their CEO is Antonio Horta Osorio try and say that quickly uh, they have a ticker of LLOY a market cap of 19.12 billion a PE ratio of 6.92 which is quite low revenue of 16.86 billion and EPS of 0.04 that is quite low and that would be a worry but they have a lot of shares on the market which is probably why it's been forced so low the dividend yield is non-existent at the moment because it's been cut but it was sitting at a nice four percent which is quite healthy have a net income of 2.92 billion which is a lot of money to be sat on and not be able to return to investors they do have quite a high debt to assets ratio though of 94 percent and they have a lot of assets under management which can uh, tank that figure slightly um, but that that is a red flag to us investors usually approaching 100 percent debt to assets is never particularly good if we have a look at the growth sides of things bearing in mind this is a mature company you can see that their revenue growth is almost stagnant stagnant over the last five years but nobody's expecting significant revenue growth from a bank that's already a very mature company so over the last three years they've lost 2.5 percent and then over five years they gain 0.48 so not particularly great a better metric for them is the three-year and five-year EPS growth of 16.06 percent and 5.9 percent respectively and a compound annual growth rate of 5.68 percent it's not double digits but it is pretty good solid sustainable growth and then as as we can see there the dividend has been cut so it's been taken away from that metric Lloyd's had I not invested in HSBC for me is something well worth looking into just be purely the same as Aviva for the significant upside here over the coming five to ten years and then the eventual return of dividends hopefully next year but we don't obviously we don't know and it's not being announced but rest assured you are pretty much buying the bottom of this company at the moment I really don't think it can get too much lower of course it can go a whole 27p lower but based on the past performance over the last few months or so it is about as cheap as it's going to get I think and getting in now will stead you in a good position for the longer term hey again guys welcome back that was Lloyd's banking group there as you can see heavily discounted as I already mentioned if I hadn't already jumped in with HSBC I'd be certainly looking into this company a lot harder I do expect the share price to recover to about 50p a share north to 60p a share when the dividends return it's just about pa playing the patient game and waiting for that to happen and we don't actually know when that's going to be there's been no announcements about that but I wouldn't expect anything be before obviously they've said it's not happening for 2020 so you're looking at probably quarter two 2021 depends on how the response and how the pandemic grows and what actually happens in the coming six months or so anyway now we're going to move on to our final company which has actually done particularly well during this uh, pandemic in the end it recovered really really well and that is Rio Tinto the mining company so they have now completed the v-shaped recovery as you'll soon see when we get into the app they dropped to about 30 pounds a share in the midst of the crisis but now they're up to 45 and they've surpassed where they were pre-crisis the only issue that we've got with this company is the ethical side of things so it's doing absolutely fine now in terms of its business stock price relatively unaffected by the goings on in the world because the 
world still needs its products. It's a precious metals miner, so it goes for aluminium, iron ore, copper, gold, uh, diamonds, all of that sort of thing that's needed for industry and a whole plethora of other things. Interesting to note that they do actually mine stuff for electric cars as well. So there's very important precious metals that are needed to produce electronic cars and they actually have an environmental impact and impact and people don't actually necessarily consider that a great big mine has to be ravaged into the landscape to mine this material for their electric cars that's just something for me saying there do like this company it has a massive dividend yield yes it doesn't grow it that much but when it's over six and a half percent anyway all you need is it for it to sustain that and it seems that it has the cash flow to do that that being said let's get into the app and let's have a look Hey again guys, so here we are looking at Rio Tinto. And as you can see, it's a marked difference to the other two. So early this year, it was at 46 pounds. And then it dropped, as mentioned, all the way down to 30 pounds here in March. And then it's almost very quickly completed the V-shaped recovery and was back to 45 pounds a share by June, which is very quick as people started to realize that factories and car manufacturers, etc., still needed Rio Tinto's products. The ticker is Rio or RIO. Great company by the look of it, even if you do take the ethical issues into account. CEO is Jean Sebastian Jack or Jacque or however you say that. I can't, I'm terrible with names sometimes. Now, 46,000 employees based across the world. They have a market cap of 77.93 billion, a very low PE ratio of 8.18, revenue of 32.26 billion, which is obviously enormous, enormous in itself. Earnings per share of £5.68, that's also pretty good. And there we were talking about it before, a dividend yield of 6.38%. Revenue has grown year on year for the last three years to, as mentioned, £43.16 billion and a net income of £8.01 billion for a profit margin of 18.5%, which is pretty high. They have a low debt to assets ratio or where I would be happy at 53.84%, which is a nice feeling really. So the company doesn't have too many debts to deal with and can start moving on to the next mine or whatever it needs to invest in. If we hop on over to the growth metrics as mentioned here, three year revenue growth has taken a little bit of a hit down almost 2%. But over five years, it's up at 8.51%. Earnings per share growth has been steady at 6.7% in the last three years and 24% in the last five, which is pretty good. So they continue to get more and more efficient over time. Compound annual growth rate is quite low at 1.41%. That could be better, really. That's that's not particularly great. However, this company is doing well at the moment and that is important to consider when going forward. A lot of companies' annual growth rates are going to be massively affected by this pandemic and the recession. And then we can see the three-year dividend growth rate of just minus half, half a percent there, but when it is as high as 6% anyway, even at the top share price that it is at the moment, you don't really need that to grow too much. You just need it to maintain a nice, healthy 6% or slightly better if you're getting at a lower price. That being said, I'm gonna wrap it up. Hey again, guys, that was the final company there then. I genuinely hope you've enjoyed this video and it's brought you some serious value. If that is the case, do please consider hitting the like button and the subscribe button. I was an investor in Rio Tinto, but I decided to come out as it got back to its full share price and reinvest the money elsewhere. But that was only my dealings. There's nothing fundamentally wrong with the company for me to do that. Hopefully you've enjoyed the video and I'll catch you in the next investing episode. Catch you in another one. Bye bye.